Hey folks, welcome back to the Pitch Crew. Today we are finally going to cover chat GPT agent mode. So I think it's finally rolling out a bit more broadly. This is kind of a combination of deep research and operator. Seems to be a great release. So we're going to put it through some tests and see how it does. So we are going to run agent mode through our norm normal set of tests and see what this sort of agentic tool use environment that it has lets it accomplish on those normal tests. So first up is our coding test. And today we are going to do the city. We're asking it to generate a uh, procedurally generate a city in an HTML file. Now, the cool thing about agent mode is it will be able to hopefully open up that file, view it, and iterate based on what it sees. So we'll add a little bit to the end of the prompt about that. So we've got the prompt in uh, with our little addition and agent mode turned on, and we'll send it off. So it starts, it says setting up my desktop. This is like spinning up the VM. We can see it's begun the coding process, and it's able to switch over into a browser and actually load up and we can kind of see behind the preview text that it's loaded up what it's generated. Mm -hmm. Now hopefully it realizes this doesn't really look like a city. Mm -hmm. It's saying it's going to adjust and we've switched back to code. Sometimes in our test we do multiple iterations and agent mode is kind of able to do that on its own before coming back with a final response. Yeah. As we get into, you know, further in the year of agents, you need the ability for the, the model to just cook. Right, like it can see and it can just continue to iterate as opposed to us always being in the loop. I don't know how many iterations it's actually done. It's but like five or something five right or something. now. But that, the fact that it's now like this, we could go get a coffee, come back, and if it's quite a bit better than just like one shot, suddenly you're going to see these like compounding benefits. It's encountered an error, but this is hopefully where we see the benefits of agent mode where it's able to realize that and it's fix it. Testing the sliders. Testing the sliders, uh-huh. We're afraid okay. minutes. And, okay, here's our city. And it downloads and there it is. And here we go. Whoa, the cars are just kind of zooming. The cars are on the roads, though, which is something that we've had trouble with in the past. I guess, but they're very wide, so they're clipping through the buildings. Right, right. And, we, you know, we can see that, like, the it really leaned on this proce like procedural noise and kind of has this yeah. uh, terrain height map for the, all the buildings. I think in our follow-up, we'll ask for a more natural building height uh, and placement and also more natural placement of roads uh -huh. in relation to, like, the park areas. Um, and then can we click on the light blue areas? Let's see. It was saying that, hey, you could, like, add something. Okay, we'll see if we can. I think you have to double click. Oh, yeah. We can add buildings. So the buildings do get added, so that's great. And this is the I, this is already the best yeah. functionally to yeah. the prompt. It is yeah. the best one we've seen visually, not quite yet, but, yeah. but we'll ask for improvements there. We Let's trigger, trigger the disaster. It's the moment of truth. Disaster. Um, Seems to be business as usual in this city yeah, here. Maybe it just slows down population. All right, so this is a great first attempt functionally. Yeah. Um, the yep. best one we've seen visually, not so much. We're going to see if we can get, I mean, honestly, taking the density down to, to minimum makes it look a little bit more reasonable. Um, yeah. Yeah. But we're going to ask for overall visual improvements yeah. uh, to, the, to the layout, the buildings, the parks, and we'll see what it's able to do. We have some feedback typed out. We want the agent to go actually research existing city games and see what it can do to mimic them and improve the overall visual quality as we uh, discussed. Send it off. Awesome. Yeah, I mean... This is a real big moment for... It, it's. I was literally just about to make a comment of like, it's surprising that we're just like, oh, it's another release. When if this was the start of like 2024, we'd be like, you know, the fact that it can have a VM, iterate, and do like an excellent job, right? Like the implications here are... Pretty enormous. It's back. It uh, it didn't work quite as long this time. Mm -hmm. It is it is sharing the screenshots. We'll uh, take a look. Bird that goes through roads still kind of exist, and I think we'll give it one more shot yeah. to go through. I really want to focus on the visual quality because um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I still don't love the way that the buildings look. We're trying to be really prescriptive on doing that research and seeing other examples uh, in the wild of real city games, and then really iterating until it has a similar look. And we'll see if if we can get it to uh, do what we want here. But the second turn, it was just kind of lazy. Like it was it, just yeah. Now searching the web and stuff like that. So maybe we gave it too much, and it got lazy as a result of being like that's going to be like right too much work. My God, who did do stuff actually? It's going back to its research. It's like did we, I don't I don't think we're quite there yet. Let me go look at some more screenshots. Fifteen minutes later. Minutes. And it's back. Mm -hmm. City cozy. Okay. Let's check it out. Okay. I mean, you know, it's improved the, you know, adding different building geometries. Uh, it added trees in the park. The shadow spire thing still seems to be a bit broken. Do you see how there's like a... Yeah, there's a large... I think it, it, it acknowledged that it was a bug. It doesn't know if we got around to uh, fix it. Oh, uh, you know, this is pretty impressive. I think it's not like the... the necessarily the best result we've seen but it's up there amongst them we were very impressed by the first shot yeah 
and then as we're asking it to iterate, you know, it's not optimized for coding, so it doesn't have a bunch of coding specific tools. I can see it struggling with files and uh, reading and writing from the same file of many times, especially as the file got longer. Yeah. Um, really, my takeaway here is that the ability for it to look at its own work and then and then make changes based on that is huge. Yeah. And especially as something like Codex, if they're able to get the, the the iteration capability that we have here into a Codex style agent that has the long running and the tools, um, I think the, the software development, particularly for visual things like game dev or web dev, we're going to see massive increases in what's possible. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So uh, the next test is business reasoning. Uh, we'll get that set up and then we'll come. So we've got our business reasoning test set up and uh, Chris has joined us. So welcome Everybody. back, Chris. We usually do this test in two legs. We ask for research on all of the latest models first. We get a response containing the results of that research. And then we move on into an analysis phase where the model has to analyze that data, make a report with recommendations because of agents uh, sort of touted capabilities. We're interested to see if it can do the whole thing in one prompt. So we have a prompt here asking it to do just that, do research on all the different models, save that research in Google Sheets, and then move on to analysis and eventually recommendations to a small business. Turn on agent mode and we'll get it sent off. I like this test because it more closely mimics something I'd actually have the agent do, unlike all right. the travel examples. I like the little canned reading animation. <laughs> Gray shimmer effects, so hot right now. It's surprising how slow it is though. Is it really just gonna scan through each thing individually like this? So this is interesting, so it's back. Yeah. It worked for 15 minutes, and now it says next step is Google Sheet creation. It says it's left, it claims it's left open a sign-in page in the browser. Please take over briefly to log in. And it has made a Excel spreadsheet and a but CSV. So we gave it a read through. We noted in the sheet it compacted benchmarks into one column, so it wasn't really able to use the benchmark scores in its analysis beyond sort of general high-level recommendations. It notes its data sources. Uh, it compacted, it like sort of restated some of the information that it gathered in the CSV in the report here. Uh, and then it did its visual analysis. It really focused on context window because when it was doing the analysis, it couldn't isolate the benchmark results and it didn't have enough to do any sort of detailed benchmark analysis. So the visual analysis is lags far behind some of the other models we've tested because of the way that worked out. Um, and it really focused on context window both over time and as a bar graph, it's two context window graphs, and then it does an input price versus throughput. Like throughput is its tokens per second is its metric for uh, performance as opposed to anything that is weighted by intelligence or benchmark results. Kind of provides some analysis on those the, on that data, and then uh, it does some very high level general trends and projections. It didn't calculate any of them. They're sort of vibe based, as we were saying off camera, and then talking about the final recommendations, which is usually the most interesting. It provided some useful information, again, high-level stuff that it could glean from the high-level information that it collected. It's it's recommending the best models overall out of the set of models it does have, so it's recommending 4.1 Mini. Uh, it doesn't rec mention 4.1 because it didn't capture that in its searching. And then, yeah, a lot of these recommendations weren't that interesting to us. I think the, the one thing I'll call out is that for coding and automation, we've seen a lot of models slip over to recommending small or open source models for some reason for coding. And the recommendation here to use the, the models that's maxing out coding benchmarks, I think, was much more in line with what I would want to see. But overall, like, no, no mind-blowing insights. Uh, a lot of the other Frontier models have had a better result on this test. Now we will note that uh, it had to go off course a little bit because it didn't have access to the Google tools we wanted it to use. And so it sort of completed the task as best as it could without access, but then dropped this login button at the bottom of the response. So we will log in and give it another attempt to uh, spruce up its response and just see how far its tool calling can go. But in terms of its raw analysis here on this one test, uh, wasn't blowing us away. Anything else to add, guys? I just think it's quite surprising given how they framed it, right? They sort of framed it as it's deep research married to operator. And this is worse than deep research just being given the task to research this. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's pretty unexpected, at least from my end. We'll give it the login, see if it can maybe like redeem itself with the... Yeah, the prison stuff a bit better. We were able to log in to Google. Notably, the Google login page was not open. We had to go navigate to it. 
we're just going to let it run and see what happens now that it has access to Google. More testing its tool calling and how it formats the report and less about the actual data that it collected. To its credit, it is properly using Google Sheets right now. At the end it goes, since the user is using Google Sheets, they can rename the sheet themselves. And then it finished. So now that we were able to get over sort of the G Suite login hump, we're giving it a final chance here to uh, flush out the data it's collected, keep building on that, that Google Sheet, and then eventually uh, do more analysis and add that to a PowerPoint. So we'll see. This should be in the wheelhouse of the tool based on the demos that we saw from OpenAI. So we're hoping for the best here. Is it going to do the captcha? Verify you are human. Wait, so OpenAI is, is using the avoid agent scraping Cloudflare technology? Yes. That's blocking their own agent? Yes. Okay, good. Just, just keep it up. Okay, it's moved on to slides though, at least. Look, it's done PowerPoint. It's oh, done after right. 29, 29 minutes. minutes of thinking and 20 sources. It has come back with an updated spreadsheet, notably not in Google Sheets, but it did look like it was using Google Sheets in there somewhere. Uh, and then our final presentation. So let's take a look at what it was able to pull together. Again, we're really looking at the tool calling ability and how did it style things. Um, so we want to note that it did use image gen to generate this illustration for the title cool. slide, which is sort of impressive. And then moving through the, <laughs> moving through the deck, it's, it's, it's not particularly well formatted. Um, and another thing to note is that it's mostly using its charts from the first time around. Now, it, it, as we go through, we'll see some newer charts. So it was able to effectively integrate some more benchmark data. This one is uh, mm -hmm. MMLU across a couple different models. If we're talking about like how much insight does this give me, it, it didn't chart it in a way where I can really see the differences clearly between the models. It didn't include models that have massive differences between MMLU performance and MMLU is increasingly not the benchmark people are looking at. Some decisions frankly, were made. very strange. It's very old. Right, it's like GPT four one mini and stuff like that. Yeah. To your mm -hmm. point, like from an actual analytics perspective, it's certainly regressed here, um, even compared to the report it gave. Then it has <laughs> what three chart. models: input price versus MMLU. I mean, there's a single data point on this one. I, you know, it was trying to keep to our asks. Uh, it did some things that were impressive, like you know, including the citations at the bottom of the slide. It was able to actually pull the slide together, but in terms of the content, still not really useful, still not really there. Pulling a lot of charts from the first round um, and very similar recommendations. So, oh, look at this one. Undersized chart on the right with two, maybe three data points. Possible to read. So the, the, the ability to run for a long time, call many tools, complete in some sense a task that requires many different actions is a glimpse into the future of what these systems will be will be capable of. Particularly, we're excited for like a GPT-5 level system with the same infrastructure. Um, but for now, uh, I'm not going to be using it for the size of task that we were asking, like a research and artifact creation. That seems to be too much uh, for the, the system as it currently stands. Moving on to our last test, which is agentic reasoning. And usually, we uh, use our maze tool where we generate a maze and then we copy a text version of that maze into the chat client. Now, because this model is agentic and this is sort of an agentic system, we are just going to give it the URL of the maze tool and see if it can test itself. Um, so our common maze test, but agent edition, uh, we'll send it off. And to note, we're starting at 20 because we know like GPT class models can do size 20. Right? I don't know why it's so exciting, but seeing it actually render our tool and then generate mazes is kind of cool. Is it going to click the generate? Show best solution. It did. Let's see. Oh, the show best solution. Clicking copy prompt. Oh. <laughs> and it showed good. the best solution. Good, good, good. I'm following the blue post step by step in the grid. I'll list the cell names sequentially after listing the estimate. <laughs> it's cheating. That's fine. No, this, isn't it, actually... this is feeling the AGI. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it can actually, if it can now take this and then, you know, give it to us, great. But I'm, it might get confused. Okay, now it's copied the prompt. Kind of fascinating, actually, that it's getting so stuck right now. Like it's trying so many different things. Did it actually just like rip the HTML file and now it's trying to like reverse engineer the best solution thing? Wait, did it generate a new maze? It generated a new maze. And I think it said something about doing a search and there's like an ejection attack. So it's just, it's just vibing right now. We're gonna be here all day. It came back and said, the goal is to actually solve the maze. <laughs> So it's kind of like went back. Manual path, it just zoomed in again. It's already, I mean, the funny thing is it already has the best solution. 
<laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It literally has. They can just be like, I, I will track I would have been happy if it just brute, if it just like outputted that. Like it just kept saying, I can't see, I can't see. And it zoomed in too much and now it can't see. It just needs to learn to zoom out. And now it's added B2 as well. <laughs> will that help? It all bl Are we going to no, brute force this maze? <laughs> Let me try C3. Are I, that that appears to be what's happening. I think it's yeah, gonna do oh, it. B2 it. It's gonna brute force the maze. With the ideal path. Oh. Oh boy. This is this was. I mean, this is an entertaining uh, failure, but it is the worst attempt at this <laughs> we have ever seen. Uh, to be fair, to be fair, this this is different. That it's doing a self test. We have found the maximally inefficient way to do this. And now I'm testing D3. It's actually doing brute it's, force. It's doing brute yeah. force. To, to recap. The agent immediately found the best solution button that renders the best solution on the screen. Uh, and then it clicked it, and you can see that blue line at the right of the preview right now is the best solution. And then it got into this long cycle of getting confused and zooming in, and then try now it's trying to brute force the solution by adding one move to the path every single time and then checking it. And so we're, we're sort of confused, and we're not optimistic about it really getting to something good in any reasonable amount of time. But we're a little disappointed that it wasn't able to solve this because uh, models in the past have been able to solve this, particularly ones with a, sort of a tool calling system built around them. While Agent is the most open-ended sort of agentic product OpenAI has ever made, we can see how there's sometimes a drawback to that, especially in this early state where the open-endedness lets it go off and try these wild things that don't uh, lead to success. So I think, the, at least for me, the conclusion is sort of holding through here that it was cool to see it pull up the web page and use its tools and discover the button that chose the best path and try to cheat the test. But the system and the model behind it is not at the point yet where uh, we can just start throwing in arbitrary tasks and expect them to get completed. We're getting a glimpse of the future of what will it be like when models can have full domain over a browser and over a set of tools and over a computer. And that will work better for some tasks than others. Like for our first coding test, we saw some really cool things happen where it was able to look at the output and then iterate. But we're still on this long road of integrating multiple capabilities and making the models more and more general and the systems around them more and more general. Impressive coding performance, but then after that we've kind of seen it fall down, as you said. Like, I think it's like trying to do too much operator or visual stuff. But it is early days. Uh, we will continue to follow this. I'm sure they'll continue to improve it. Just a bit disappointing. It doesn't seem to be able to leverage its like full intelligence, right? It seems so close. I wish they would have labeled it as a research preview because your average normal person who's not terminally online looking at AI has just heard the term agent maybe and thinks that's what the latest and greatest thing is. And if your average person uses this, they're going to think AI is way dumber than it is. I think this is a cool, like from from an inside AI perspective, it's like, oh, this this shows a path to doing really useful work. And you can imagine the loop that can come from being able to code a website, test the website, go back to it. You can imagine how this will get better over time. But I almost wish this was more buried for now. I, I don't want normal people to use this tool. So cool to see. Uh, we'll, we'll keep our eyes peeled for more updates to OpenAI's agents tools and uh, all the competitors in the space, as well as we're getting excited for what seems to be the rumblings of a GPT-5 release. So definitely keep your eyes on the channel. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.